Hello Noobers, this is the second part to the Unity in Bolt tutorial. In this video, we're going to be working on a menu so you can restart the game if you hit an object and not just automatically restarting. Making a menu so if you get to the end, it asks you to move the next level. And how to import custom assets because when I was making my first game that was an issue I was having a lot so let's get started so here we are in Unity so I did some work off camera I just placed this little obstacle here and I turned the lighting off so we so the light doesn't affect anything <laughs> so first of all if we want to add something so it doesn't automatically restart the game so we can just do create empty and then we can reset the transform reset and we can name this reset manager like so and we can set all our canvas objects on that so we can just do Wait, instead of like actually doing a reset manager, I think we can just do UI canvas and name this reset canvas. That should work. And by default, we'd have that set active to false, so it won't be activated. And under here, we can just do UI text. Now, create text, we can center this out. Hold Alt and drag the square to get to the size you want. Like so. I think dynamic clipping is an issue. There we go. And we can just call it object hit, maybe. Like so. And it will say object hit, and then we can change the size. We can change the font, I'm not doing messing around with the font right now. We can probably set the color to black, I'm just doing drag my game view over there. Okay, and under this recta transform, we click on this little square, hold down alt, and choose where you want it. I want it in the center, and then we can just bring that up a little bit. Like so. But now we have our object hit. And if we set this to not active and we go under our flow machine restart game flow graph instead of doing scene manager load scene we can do game object set active and we can have to choose our value we can just go into here to variables, a uh, scene variable. I can remove that. I was messing around with something off camera. We can name this reset canvas game object. Like so. We can set the value to a game object and we can just drag and drop our reset canvas into here. And we can just drag this little variable over here and just plug that in right there. And on collision enter, that will set that to active. So if we give it a try, it should work. I'm just going to drag my game view back over here so you guys can see it. Nope, not where I wanted to. So if we hit an obstacle. It says object hit, but we can still play the game. So in order to do that, we can just go into here and set time scale. Happen time scale. And we can set the time scale to zero. So if we play our game, it should we should not be able to move at all because the time scale is zero. So if we hit an object, we shouldn't be able to move. Yeah, like yeah, we can't like so 
So we have that working, but we just need a button in there so we know you did hit an object. So we can, under our reset canvas, we can UI button and just drag it like there. We can name this restart button. Button. We can just leave that at default. You can click this little arrow over here to expand something, and we can just name this restart, like so. And we want to change the color, so I actually set up something by default. Should work. No, it's not what I want to do. No. There we go. Okay, so we have this. So that should be our base color. We can just set everything to there like so. And then we can just slowly bump up the alpha for everything. Because we don't want the button taking up like a lot of screen space. Unless you hover over it. So over this highlighted color we can just bump up the alpha. Let's type in like 65. We should be able to see that, and the press color can be like 85. The selected color can be 105. Nope, 105. And the disabled color, it's probably never going to be disabled, so we can just leave that at default, and then we can use these little things to change the scale of the object. Let's move this down a little bit, and under the tick we can change the font size, so it's like restart, but by default this button isn't scripted to do anything, so if we go into our game, it's the say object hit. So if we go into our game, this button isn't scripted to do anything, so we'll just sit here. So we go in our floor graph and we type in well let's create a variable first and call it restart button and let's just use the same formatting enter and we can choose game object and we can do we can find this and find the restart button oh i forgot to set to game object there we go and then we can we can add on button click. It's an event, so and we can drag this over here. So that's the button. And we can do scene manager load scene. Load scene scene build index. And we can go into here and do add. The value by let's just set the float literal to zero and float literal to zero so it's not adding anything. So if we go into here under the restart canvas, I should make something called canvas manager because we're going to have multiple canvases. So if we play the game and we hit an object. It says object hit, we aren't able to move, but if we click this little restart icon, it restarts the game. But it doesn't reset the time scale. So under here, after it loads the scene, we can do time scale, set time scale, and set that to one. So now if we play the game, it should set the time scale back to one. So we can reload as many times as we want. Restart. And if we click restart, then we hit this object. We can click restart again. And we're still able to move around. Like so. So this is everything we have so far. And now we want something else if we want to a menu so if you
collide with the end trigger, uh, it, it sets another canvas active. So we can just clear that error and under the end trigger flow graph, instead of that, we can, we can create, let's just create an empty and call it canvas manager. So, reset canvas, we can drag that under there, and uh, we can create a new canvas. This probably isn't the best way to do that, and we can call this uh, end menu canvas. Like so. We can drag that under our canvas manager. And now we have a completely new canvas. And if we create text, this text can say something like level complete. Let's just use the rect tool. We can say level complete. bring up the font size so it actually looks like you won the level. You can drag this in. It's all about space optimization. You don't want everything taking up everything. Like so. So level complete. And then we can create a button and it says load next level. Button. So we can yeah it's dragged under there. And we can just name this um, next level, next level button. Let's reset the rec transform on that and bring it down like so. We'll use the same swatch like so. And we'll always just bump up the alpha. So normal color B is 65, 85, 0, 0, 5, like so. And under the little text button, we can just say next level. Like so, we can bring up the font size. So it actually looks like you're loading the next level. And now, under here, we'll set this not active. And under the scene variable, we can kind of do and can this and do game object. Like so, we can set this to a game object value. Just drag that in there under our flow graph on trigger enter. And we can just do game object set active. Set active. And we can just drag that in there like so. And we'll set true and then we'll set the time scale to true to zero and then on button click we'll, we'll do next level button next level button again object like so We'll set that value to game object and then we'll just try to drop the next level button in there like so and then we do the on button click on button click and then we can do times same manager load scene build index we can do 
add this can be a float literal so zero and float literal and one and then it doing the it's magic time scale but since we this won't actually work because we don't have the scene after this we can just set the time scale back to one so it's not really complex it's just a basic script to set things to active and setting things not active because you don't want it to where like if you hit the trigger you don't want it to where you can still move around and hit an obstacle you want it so <laughs> you want it so it uh freezes time and it's the same if you hit an obstacle it starts time so you can't just go past the little barriers object hit and then he can work this little restart button and then we can start messing around with animated objects so like animated cubes things that go back and forth back and forth so we can just drag our little prefab in here. I set up a few custom materials. This is the fill in texture, the hostile texture, the in, in texture, and I also have one for player clip, but we don't have any player clips yet. And uh, we can just drag and drop the obstacle in there, like so. So this is going to be a moving obstacle. And we can just, we can actually make a folder called animations. 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 And we can drag and drop the obstacle under the obstacle manager. And this is going to be the obstacle that's animating. So we can go their animation. Hold on. I think it's actually animator. No. Huh. I actually forgot how to add animations to things. So we can just do create. Anyways, you want to open this window and it, it's the animation tab. And animator. Wait, no, it's not the animator tab. Sorry. It's the animation tab. We'll just drag and drop that. No animal. Do set animations. Open. Save. Cube. Maybe we can end this. Cube. Like so, and we can actually record this. It took me forever how to figure out how to add, move the little play button, but that added the animator to it. Like so, and we should be able to drag frames. Like so, so at. I believe these are in seconds, so at frame 3, so at frame 0, it's doing nothing, at frame, or maybe it's, let's just do frame 30, it's, it's 2 on the z-axis, and at 1 minute, it's back at 0. And then we can go out of record mode, and we should see our little animation if we click this little play button. And that should make it to where I accidentally set the animator to pause. <laughs> oh, well, I guess it still works. But if we should be able to come in contact with it, and it's the exact same obstacle, it just animates back and forth. So, you can make some crazy inmate cubes with this. 
and it says object hit and it freezes time and then we can restart and then we sh should see the whole thing we should probably get. So we can find the animated cube, this, this one. And for it to be a looping animation, you have to make sure your first keyframe and your last keyframe are the exact same transforms or whatever thing you apply to it. Just about everything in here is animatable except for game objects. But yeah, you can animate colors too. I think. I'm not sure. And let's also make it to where if you come in contact with an obstacle, it changes the color of the sphere. So let's set that up. Restart game. Low graph on collision and turf. So before that, let's just disconnect these two. Change color. Wait, there should be a color. Set. Text set color. No. Color set. No, that's alpha. Hold on. I have to find it. Let's just set the R to red. And then. Wait, no. Let's actually do it. Let's make a separate script that sits on the player for this. I think I'm going to have to rename this script so it's player controller. Player controller. Is that sure we named it? Like so. And then we can do on collision enter. Enter. And we can make a variable. I believe I actually have. Let's just set up a graph var variable and call it hostile object prefab. I prefer using prefabs, not tags. In game object, we can find our prefabs. Oh, let's just drag this. Variables tab out for a second, and then we can do our obstacle. Now we can drag it back. We can set this back to normal scale. We can drag that in there. Like so we can do set our value. And set to red. Like so. So if we collide with an object. It should, hopefully, set the color to pure red. Oh, it does it for some reason. Not getting any errors, so that's good at least. If any of you guys know how to set the colors, let me know in the comment section below. But I believe there is a way to work and if it doesn't we're just going to have to figure that out no it doesn't we said it but we're also not getting any errors so I think we're just going to have to there's a lot of trial and error that goes into this so 
never unpack a prefab. Never unpack a prefab completely. Unless you are 100% sure you will never do any prefab editing to it again. That's a rule of thumb. And if we go into, we'll rebake the lighting for this map so we can go into rendering, lighting settings. We can just drag that to where the inspector is. We can do generate lighting. And it should bake the light. It actually makes the game look like a lot fancier. Yeah, like makes it a lot brighter. And not as dull. So this is what it looks like now. And now we're going to mess around with invisible barriers. So in order to do an invisible barrier, I'm just going to copy an obstacle, but not have the obstacle. Well, I think we can actually create a prefab. No. So we're going to have to, if this is a 100% square, which it is not, let's just set this value back to 43. Should have made it better. I think we're just gonna have to set this to 50 and this to 50. Like so. I mean, I guess that could work. I mean, we don't have to have anything behind this camera. Because, like, let's actually do, I'm gonna drag my game view over to my second monitor. Always make sure what you're doing is snap to the grid. Okay, so now we're like actually using some space. Now I can just drag that back to there. So now we can set up invisible barriers. So we can go under 3D object cube, we can name this invisible barrier. Like so. They can turn off the mesh render. I mean, it will help in the earlier stages. And then we can just. I need to be two on the fly. No. Huh. I believe Pro Builder cubes are larger, so. Going to snap this to the grid on how high it needs to be. Yeah, that should work. Now we just drag this to the end to make sure the. And just set that to 50. Nope. Set that back to zero and this to 50. I think it's be. Yeah, it's because Pro Builder object sizes are actually different than standard unity sizes so we're just going to have to rename this invisible barrier I believe we can unpack this prefab completely because it's a different model. We can remove the hostile prefab to it, or yeah, the hostile script. We can scale that to 50. No, no, no. like so. So now we have a barrier of some sorts. We can just turn off this mesh mirror and now we have an invisible barrier. So if we like actually move the camera back a little bit, we should see that the ball does not go off that edge because an invisible barrier is there. So let's actually take 
I mean, the lighting does look a lot better. <laughs> yeah, the ball doesn't go off the edge. Cool. So now we can just move that back to there. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please subscribe. Please subscribe. And smash that bell. Uh, there's going to be one more tutorial video for using Unity and Bolt. And, uh... Yeah, we should. Let me go show you how to copy scenes, uh, how to import audio, how to import video, and how to apply, and how to import 3D models. Anyways, fun new bird out.